Hello, participants in the Great Plains Growers Conference. It's an honor to be able to present about Arkansas blackberries, past, present, and future. When did we last meet? I went back and checked my records. In 2015, I came to your meeting. I can't believe it's that long ago, but I'm glad that we're back together to talk about some new things. There's a lot of good that has come from Arkansas blackberries since back then. Since 2015, a few noteworthy items. First off, I'm seven years older, and that's pretty easy to figure. And I'm in my last year of University of Arkansas career, finishing up at the end of 2022. But the good news is our breeding program and an array of fruits is continuing, including blackberries, with more gusto, I think, than I ever had with Dr. Margaret Worthington. Dr. Worthington joined the University of Arkansas in 2016, and so, she is expanding the program with new techniques, molecular techniques, and already working in blackberries and other fruits. So we'll have a seamless transition from the olden days to the new. So that's one of the most positive things I can tell you because that's what leads to a continuation of new varieties for, for growers just like you. A few other things since 2015. I've had a lot of inquiries about blackberries from the Midwest and from your region. And I think there are more blackberries now than there've ever been. There's a lot of interest in blackberries. They're popular with people. People like blackberries and the better they get in flavor, plus the known health attributes, I think the expansion will continue. Shipping of blackberries is expanded in many areas of the United States, particularly in the South, Southeast and California. A key thing on that though, is when you produce for shipping is you are subject to the wholesale price. It can be impacted by a number of different factors including primarily how many berries are on the market, but also that can be impacted by foreign supplies and other issues. The local markets are great and getting better. I see nothing about local marketing of blackberries. It's anything but positive. That includes own farm sales, pick your own. And I think pick your own had increased interest in the COVID concerns in the last couple of years. Farmers markets continue to be a great place to sell berries. Consumer supported agriculture or farm share has expanded, a great idea. The main thing about this, I always keep in mind in talking to growers, is you get a retail price with these markets as opposed to the wholesale price. There's nothing better than a retail price. The, the return is always better. Also, a couple of other items since 2015. We've had a lot more of the rotatable cross arm use for winter cane survival than the ease of harvest, particularly in pick your own. It's expensive and it takes some training to be able to get the plants to grow to this, but just look at the picture there and how those fruits are displayed. Other benefits are reduced sun exposure. So um, that and sometimes is really important, particularly for issues of like sun damage to fruits, white droop, things like that can occur. So really can't beat that as far as the display for harvest. Another area that's been interesting to me is we've had more moderate winters in general in the 80s and 90s uh, compared to the 80s and 90s in the last 10 or 15 years. <clears throat> that said, we had minus 15 to minus 20 in our part of Arkansas in 2021. And that was an eye-opening experience, way colder than it's ever been. So we see these exceptions, but in general, things are a little warmer. The last time I spoke to you in 2015, I talked about for the first time Osage and Primark Freedom, Primark Traveler. I've got some new ones to tell you about today. First off, Ponca. Ponca is my favorite of our blackberries. It's sweet and the Sabo solids are higher than any of other varieties, can be up to 13%. And it also has a reduced acidity, always below 1% spend a lot of energy in breeding to get sweeter and reduced acidity because that really fits the flavor profile most people like. More people are eating fresh berries these days as opposed to just uh, using them in jam or cobblers or pies or other processed products. And that's really important. And for marketing, if someone will sit down and eat the clamshell, they'll come back and get another one pretty quick. And that's what you really want, repeat customers. Paca has great aromatics. Folks are just really liking Ponca. I seldom run into anyone who does not like Ponca. And it's about the most consistent one I've seen from harvest to harvest to harvest. Blackberries among all the crops I've worked with have been the trickiest to get consistent uh, berry after berry after berry and harvest after harvest. And I guess the best um, testament I can give to this is this is the blackberry that I make sure I pick 
at first and take home. Now, I've got a lot of options, particularly after dealing with a lot of blackberries. And this is one I can really go back and say, I want to have some of these, partly because I want others to share in the joy of having Ponca. Ponca ripens early, very close to Natchez, two to four days before Caddo and Osage and a week before Washita. Harvest dates vary a little bit when you change locations, but generally it's an early variety. The average size is about 6.8 grams. It's larger than Osage and about with Washita, but smaller than Caddo and Natchez. The yield on Ponca has been comparable to Osage and Washita. We usually shoot for somewhere around 15 to 20,000 pounds per acre in our research plot calculations uh, to make sure it's like the yield is adequate. And then after that, it's a matter of management and other issues for yield components. Doesn't yield as much as Natchez, which is about our highest yielding variety that we've released uh, publicly. The first bud break date with Caddo and Osage is usually uh, five days later as is Ponca, and that's uh, later than Natchez, which can get nipped sometimes from spring frost and freezes. The first bloom date of Ponca is with Caddo a little later than Osage, which is positive, and eight days later than Natchez. So this is just a little bit of an avoidance of any concerns, hopefully from uh, spring freezes. A few things are interesting about Ponca. First off, it has some secondary buds that tend to ripen 14 to 20 days after the primary crop. And this extends the cropping a little longer, usually around 50 days or so cropping season. And it can also produce some basal canes. These are canes that emerge more from the base of the plant, from the crown. They fruit lower in the canopy, but they fruit after the primary crop. So these are all pluses, particularly for local markets where you can, uh, might need some more berries to extend your marketing season and it's worth sending uh, laborers through to, to harvest. Baca has an attribute that I've really focused on a lot in the last number of years and that's healthy plants. And what do I mean by healthy plants? Well, plants where the floricane leaves stay green even after harvest. I think that's important to maintain sweet berries through the season and also to help build the plants up again uh, for the next year, for the primocanes and for next year's flowering. So really a plus as far as um, health. I have not seen any evidence of our common um, diseases that we uh, have seen or at times over the years in Arkansas. Ponca grows a little different than the other ones. Look at the picture on the left. <clears throat> now that's just about harvest time with uh, Washita or other of our um, erect type varieties. So you can see berries are ripe, but there's a lot of primocane sticking up above the canopy. Now those really should have been tipped before that point, but growers have to go in and tip at least at that time or sometime near the first harvest usually. And that results in, of course, a job that has to be done near harvest, but also it results in some of that tipped material often falls down on the canopy and it can be in the way. Look at the picture on the right. So this is well into the harvest of Ponca and look at where the primocanes are in the middle of that row. I was picking on this several years ago when it was a selection, Ponca was, and I just noticed toward the end of the season, those canes down there, what I call primocanes in waiting, is what I made up as far as the word to describe that. And they were below the canopy, not in the way. You could see all the berries and we didn't, hadn't had to go in and tip those beforehand. That's an interesting trait. And it looks like this uh, more delayed uh, primocane emergence could be a management plus. And really, it's all because of the short internodes, and I want to talk about a little more. On the left is the picture again that I just showed. And on the right, I want to show you this is a dormant plant. Uh, this is in February. And the canes, according to our T-type trellis we use where we test these, pretty much the same size of any other blackberry, Washita or others. And this is after pruning and shortening the lateral. So a full complement of canes is not a reduced size plant. But if you look a little closer at those canes, look, notice the internodes, that's the state space between the nodes quite close together. So that's where this different growth habit um, is manifested. So you have pretty concentrated fruiting area. I think that's a plus and hopefully just a little better management plant. Bonka produces pretty um, thick canes, not excessively thick, but I like the looks of that because that usually shows the ability to ripen berries, carbohydrate preserves, and storage are good in those canes. 
just to review a little bit on blackberries, the Arkansas blackberries, or all blackberries, you know, the, the plants, if you plant them, such as these plants right here of Ponca, were planted in May 2021. This picture was taken in September. So the canes um, of newly planted blackberries tend to be semi-erect or kind of flop around. And so they need to be tied up to a trellis because that's where the fruit's gonna be born uh, the next year or 14 months after planting. And so these canes of Ponca are have grown very vigorously. They're thicker than many other blackberries, easier to tie. And I think they're gonna yield a lot. Now, the second year and subsequent years, the canes are gonna grow erect, not with this semi-erect habit. Most of you are familiar with this, but I wanted you to see this. So this is a, a year after planting. The previous pictures were older plants. As far as winter hardiness, that's very important for your region of the country. And we really don't know much about the hardiness of Ponca yet because you have to get it out there with farmers and find out how things really work. It appears over the years that the hardiness is similar to Washita and Osage in general. Minus 15 Fahrenheit resulted in no crop loss or cane damage uh, this past winter, which I found hard to believe, but the plants were well hardened. It had been cold before that. We hadn't had our fluctuating temperatures like we have some time for loss of hardiness. Tilling is not a concern for you, but in some parts of the country, it's always uh, a concern, particularly in the deep south where chilling can be limited, particularly in recent years with such odd weather and lack of chill occurring. Post-harvest really looks good. The berries up above on that picture have been stored for a week. You see just, see just a few red droops on a few berries, but generally they remain black. They stay firm. Uh, they're much like Washita and Osage as far as this reversion, this reddening of the berries. You can have some leakage, uh, but I don't believe leakage is a huge issue with this. One thing about it, well, they taste good after seven days. And the lower picture kind of shows what the berries look like, freshly harvested, nice and shiny, really attractive. Let's talk about Caddo. Caddo is another new variety released the year before Ponca. And it's another thornless erect plant, floricane fruiting. It's related to Osage. And if you haven't tried Osage, or if you have, a key thing for you to remember about Osage is that's a consistently good tasting berry also. So if you don't have Osage, consider that. But Caddo is related, again, focusing on flavor and the crossing and breeding in the program. Caddo generally begins early, a little bit before Washita, pretty much, but uh, an experience of the growers early in its commercial production have shown it, shown it to run a little bit later than, than I describe here, and sometimes fruiting after Washita is completed. So that's a plus. But generally, we tend to think it'll be a little bit before Washita starting. It's a big berry, average eight to nine grams. It can be bigger than that. So it's larger than Osage and larger than Washita. And I notice it stays large all season. The yields on it look good, comparable to uh, Osage and Washita. And so, so far, so good on that. As far as bud break, five days later than Natchez, again, that's important. Blooms with Osage and Washita and later than Natchez, much like I'm described for Ponca. And you see some basal canes uh, fruiting um, on uh, Caddo usually from the base of the plant to give a few later fruits uh, after the primary crop. As I said with Ponca, this one has great plant health also. Deep green color. And so that's something we want. We want healthy green leaves to make sugars. And I haven't seen problems with diseases on Caddo either. As far as winter hardiness and chilling, again, we think the hardiness is much with Washita and Osage. It did have a minus 15 that occurred this year, as not noted in the slide, that had no damage. And so that was really of interest. And don't know the chilling, but again, not a concern for you. One thing I'll mention about Caddo that I've had a couple of growers mention is it's not as prolific a cane producer from the crowd. And so if you notice that, that's not necessarily a limit on yield. It just doesn't have as many canes often. Caddo is really good. Now, it has really good aromatics. It's got a flavor component to it that always carries through. It's around 10% soluble solids and around 1% acidity. So it tends to have a little more acidity, but a lot of people like that too. And some consider that more balanced than the sweet berries, but folks really like Caddo. Post-harvest. It has storage potential that's high, <clears throat> comparable to Washita and Osage, 
not a lot of reversion or other issues. And it stored good for up to 14 days in six or seven years. And that's a little bit noteworthy also. Just looking back just briefly on other Arkansas fluorocane varieties in the order of ripening, because that's something that can be confusing, I know, is you tend to have Natchez and Ponca, usually around June 5th starting, Caddo around June 7th, um, Osage around June 10th, and Washita June 12th. And of course, this will be later uh, for you in a more northern environment. So the varieties do overlap to varying degrees, but they do stagger out as far as starting your season, which is key for marketing. People ask what to plant of the Arkansas varieties. Well, remember, Washita is at the most proven. It's been around since 2003. It's had the most plants sold. Natchez is really still a good. It's uh, high yields and large. That's a little more tart. It can overcrop in some situations if not pruned well, particularly in the deep south where they don't get any winter injury, and I've seen that to be an issue. Osage is looking good for a lot of folks. Uh, they make Osage has a really strong, healthy plant. Some people in the shipping market have found that lowering the nitrogen requirement helps in post-harvest handling, partly also because the plants grow so strong, they just don't need a lot of fertilizer. But that consistent flavor every day is really what's caught the attention of those growing Osage. And then Caddo and Ponca are new, promising. Just not a lot of commercial comments yet, but uh, what I've heard have been very positive. Moving on to primocane fruiting, a little bit about what this is. We need to remember blackberries are a perennial plant with biennial canes. And the first year canes that grow up out from the roots or the crown are called primocanes. And most of the blackberries you've ever seen have only vegetative growth that first year. And then those canes go through a dormant season. The second year they're called floricanes and that's where the fruits produce. The picture there shows primocanes in the middle of the canopy and the floricanes on either side tied to the wires. And so this is the standard blackberry. Now, primocane fruiting looks more like the picture to the upper right, where the cane is growing and it terminates in flowers. So flowers in the year of growing. So this is a pretty big deal in blackberries. So you have fruiting that develops down the cane. Now, what will happen is that cane normally will fruit sometime during the summer or into the fall. And where it fruits to, that area will die. And then you have the remaining floricane below. So the picture on the left shows the remaining floricanes. They don't really look that great, but those are buds that are gonna flower and give what's in the middle of the picture there. That's Primark Freedom in that picture of the floricane crop. So a primocane and floricane crop is possible with primocane fruiting. Uh, it takes some management to know exactly how to work with this. So we can produce two crops on the same plant. And what the impacts there? Well, potentially you can, uh, have a long marketing season. One disadvantage to that is that you have a, a long period of spraying for spotted wing drosophila. And that's one thing we've learned with the primocane fruiting. It came along before SWD as far as uh, developed in our program. And then some people just mow the canes down if they only get a, a primocane crop, particularly like in California. So the picture is there on oh, the upper one is Primark Freedom with the flora cane crop. And then the lower picture, this is a picture is taken in California where you really have excessive, huge crops of primocane berries. And just look at all that. That was taken in um, September, I believe. So how many primocane fruited plants have been made or marketed as of the summer of 21? Well, over 10 million. So that's that's several thousand acres. That's a pretty good many are out there somewhere. The biggest contributor to this has been Primark 45. It commercially has been important. And uh, we have more and more Primarkane blackberries in our national market, particularly in the shipping market. In fact, this past year, there were too many. There were more than the market can handle in uh, late August and early September. So the dynamics of the shipping industry can change quickly as you have more berries in that market. So once there were none, and now there's a pretty good mess of them out there. And again, this is a picture. This is the amount of fruit you can have. This is taken in October in California, Primark 45. Just look at all that fruit there, tremendous yield potential. And at a time where we used to really not have any blackberries in that fall season. Some challenges, when it gets above 90 degrees for primocane fruiting, you can have some big problems. You can have inhibition of flower buds. You can have doubling, poor shape. Sometimes it kills the flowers when it really gets up around 100 Fahrenheit, reduce quality, 
and yield. That berry there in the middle that I hold in my finger shows something called doubling and actually it's tripling in this case. That's multiple flowers formed on one flower bud. So it almost looks like Mickey Mouse there with uh, his ears sticking up, but those are actually two smaller berries and the primary berry. And then the upper picture was from a growth chamber where the, the flower was distorted as, as far as it's converted the petals uh, from stamens, the male parts. Lots of impacts can be had. We really haven't had hot bloom and blackberries before primocane fruiting came along because probably the flowering has always been in the spring when it's cool. So I want to tell you about a new primocane variety called Primark Horizon. It's thorny, so even though it has reduced thorns, just make a note of that. And I consider it a complement to Primark 45, our most important uh, commercial primocane fruiting variety. It has a huge floricane crop potential. And I've seen it yield with Natchez as far as floricanes. And it has a longer primocane fruiting crop potential in the fall than 45. And it can make some impressive berries, as you can see. Saba solids tends to be around 10%, varies a little bit. And that variation is largely due to what kind of crop load you have. When you have a, a large crop, you can have a little bit lower soluble solids. And the titratable acidity tends to be around 0.9%. So it's in this reduced acidity range that um, I am after in breeding. The yield, it has a huge floricane crop potential, and it can be too much, so that has to be watched carefully, particularly in the year after planting. It had the highest floricane yield we'd seen in our program, exceeding Natchez, kind of hard to believe. The floricane crop is based on the primocane crop for our year. Remember, when you have primocane flowers, any part of the cane that flowers, that's going to be spent and it's going to die, and that's going to reduce how much floricane tissue is there next year to fruit. This picture was taken near Lincolnton, North Carolina, and you can see the amount of primocane fruit on this, and that's in a pretty warm environment also. The harvest period, the floricanes first harvest around June the 12th, pretty much with Washita, a little bit later than Primark 45, and it fruits around 40, 45 days. And the primocane first harvest is averages August 4th, a few days before Primark 45. And it's usually more than 60 days, and I've seen it go well into October. The picture right there shows Primark Horizon on the left and Primark 45 on the right for primocane flowering. You can see horizon is a little ahead of 45 by a few days. Post-harvest, overall reversion is similar to Primark 45, which you can get some in long-term storage. Of course, not a concern in local markets. Firmness is really good initially and even after seven days and low leak and has some of the best retained firmness that we've seen in our breeding program. The plant, this baby will grow. Look at the plants above. Now that picture was taken in late August. You can see those long fruiting laterals there. Plants will grow pretty good. In this case, it probably needs another wire to help support that growth or either additional tipping. We haven't worked out exactly the best tipping and management in our part of the country for primocane fruiting. Uh, it seems to be hardy, I'll say to minus rather to one Fahrenheit, but that also did extend to minus 15 and chilling. Well, we don't know on that, but not a concern to you. Look at the lower picture of the long fruiting that um, you can see on those laterals on primocanes. Looking to the future, we'll have additional floricane fruiting varieties. We're really focusing on later ripening after Washita and also Washita season diversification. Always looking at sweeter and better flavor. Improved quality is something that's always um, increased importance to consumers these days. As far as primocane fruiting varieties, again, we want better quality all the time. Broader adaptation. What about in the heat for this flowering? That's a challenge. Have we made progress? I'm a little hesitant to say we have. I believe we have in some ways, but still, that's a little elusive to be sure we've got it. And then we need more thornless options in the primocane fruiting group. If you want to take a look at our varieties and the songs that go along with them, you can look at this website address and you can see another video there of Primer on Primocanes where I expand a little bit on what primocane fruiting is in case it didn't make sense. I have the honor of producing uh, and writing tunes to go along with some of these videos, so you might get a kick out of that. Thanks for your time and interest. It's always a joy to share about a career of work 
Our Arkansas bro program has been going almost 60 years. Dr. Jim Moore started in 1964. I came along in 1980, finishing up in 2022. And what an honor to be involved with this. And of course, nothing is more special than sharing with you a little bit about the progress. And the extra special part is hearing about success on your end. So I'll leave that with you. Let's think about success. And I hope you have a big time growing Arkansas blackberries.